Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to welcome everybody to New Beginnings this morning and everybody in social media for watching. If you don't have a home church, you are welcome here. We will treat you so many ways that you'll like one of them. <laughs> Turn to the book of Revelation 12 and then we will be going to the book of Genesis. Revelation 12, look at your neighbor and say, why would an all-knowing God, why would an all-knowing God ask questions? Ask questions. Revelation 12, verse 11, this is the secret to an overcoming life. If you've ever figured out I can't win in this situation, what do I do? How can I win? This is it. Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Did you hear that, Satan? I came today to bust you right in the mouth. Amen. Amen. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Praise the Lord. They love not their life unto death. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. It makes me mad when Satan messes in my family. Anything. He's, he has no business in my bill father. He has no business in my home, my mind, my body. He came this week, so today I want everybody here to know I came to personally let him know that you're stupid for trying to come into my house. Stupid. Thank you, Lord. Strengthening Jesus. That Thank verse you. says that a believer can be an overcomer. Amen. And there's two things that you've got to have to do it. We overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. You are going to have to say it, speak it, Amen. talk yes. it, and Lord. testify about it. And remind him that the gospel we have is a bloody gospel. Yes, absolutely. We've got away from that in the modern church. We want everything to be pretty and sleek and smart. But the Bible still says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Amen. Thank you, Father. I don't think we've thought about remission. Sin's mission is to steal, to kill, and destroy. The wages of sin is death. Yes. But the very blood of the slain Lamb of God takes that mission to kill and destroy you and remission you. Now turn over in Genesis. I don't know if I'm going to read it or preach it. But... Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we praise you. Genesis Jesus. 4. You, Lord. I'll read a little bit. Oh, I'm really in a preaching mood. If you are out there sick today, today is your day. If you're old and in a hospital, I came today to speak healing and set you free. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Genesis 4.10. And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. My thinking today was, because I had God do me this way. I'll be praying about something and God asked me a question and I know good and daggone well. He already knows the answer before he asks. Why is he asking stupid me? Jesus. And you go back to Genesis. Adam and Eve's in the garden. 
walking with God. They had everything they could ever want and ever need, walking with God in the cool of the day. And the serpent comes and talks to them and tells them, did God tell you you can't eat of that tree? And you said, oh yeah, we're not. We're to eat of everything in the garden, but the tree in the midst of the garden we can't eat. And then the serpent tells her, don't you know if you eat that tree you'll be like God? See, that's always the devil's issue with mankind. He's not afraid of Todd Ambergy for who he is. He's not afraid of you for who you are. But he's always wanted to be like God. And it makes him mad that we were created and designed in the likeness and the image of God. He does not like us straight out of the gate. That's it. Praise the Lord. That's it. Here, Mama. I don't love you Y'all like my suit. I love you. <laughs> my mama bought me that at the store. Lord. She paid every bit of $5 for it. I love it. Well, that's good, don't it? Yeah. Bless you, Jesus. I mean, they are at a place that literally they have a connection and fellowship with God like nobody else. He comes and sits in the shade with them in the cool of the day. They just hang out. They, they don't have to pray. They don't have to fast. They don't have to do anything because God is their friend. Yes. The devil tells them, if you eat that tree, God don't want you to know it, but if you eat that tree, you'll be like him. So they eat you. And this always fascinated me. They eat of the tree and suddenly realize they are naked. And it says, they heard the voice of God walking. It did not say they heard his footsteps. It did not say they heard him walk through the ruffling of the leaves or the grass or, or running in the sticks. It said they heard his voice walking. If you want to know the secret to, to walking with God, it's hearing his voice. You don't walk with him in footsteps, but you walk with him. Every time you hear his voice, you take a step. You hear his voice, you take another step. That's good. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus did that. He told us. Yes, he Even he. God, man in the flesh, said, I do nothing. But I hear my Father yes. do it. Yeah. Yes. I say nothing. So why does any of us in this Pentecostal, Baptist, charismatic, word of faith churches think we're something big? All that we can do at best is imitate Him. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. Bless Him, Jesus. Bless Him, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. They heard the voice of God. Mm -hmm. And God says, Adam! Where art thou? I don't know about you, but that's confusing. We have a God that the very hairs of your head are numbered. Not counted. It's not that he knows you have 3,000, 3 million hairs. He knows number four from number 857. He's an all-knowing God that knows everything. But now this day, he's asking man, where are you at? I've heard it preached ways I never could accept. Sin had separated them in such a way from God that he didn't know. He's an all-knowing God. Every sparrow that fell to the ground yesterday and died, he knew it and made an account of it. And you're going to tell me that this day, he don't know where man is. Something to think about. Where are you, Adam? Why does God ask questions that he already knows the answer to? I've had people do me that way and they was right aggravated. <laughs> yeah. It, it'd be just like 
going to the garage, a tire shop with a flat tire, telling them you need a tire, and the mechanic coming out and going, what's wrong with your car? <laughs> After you just put in a work order that you've got a flat tire and you need a new tire, and he comes out and says, tell me what's the matter with your car? Or it'd be like going to a leg doctor, sprung your ankle and hurt it, and tell him you need your ankle fixed, and that doctor comes out and goes, huh, what's the matter with your leg? It's funny, but it's true. But this is kind of God's walking, saying, Where are you, Adam? Mm -hmm. You think he didn't know? He <laughs> They're naked, and God comes to them and says, Who told you you were naked? Then he says to them, what did you do? Yeah. What has thou done? King James, redneck, what did you do? Mm -hmm. That's confusing. God knows everything, controls everything. He's sovereign and he's in charge of everything. And he has stooped to a level of asking man, where are you at? Who told you he was naked? What are you doing? And when Adam answered him, he tried to blame it on the woman. He said, that woman you gave me, she talked me into eating this fruit. Ain't that just like us today? Anytime we do wrong, anytime we're caught, we always want to blame somebody else. They didn't help me. They didn't pray for me. They didn't hold my hand. Well, boo-hoo-hoo. Praise the Lord. That's right, Brother Todd. Amen. That's right. But we do. We try to blame. We've got excuses for everything. I can't pray because I'm tired. I can't get in the Word because I fall asleep. Oh, I work hard. You're lazy. Amen. You tell me you ain't got time to pray. My fault has always been, what are you doing at 3 o'clock in the morning? Now, I got my mom here today. When I tell you people, you need to get in the Word and listen to it over and over and over, how often do I do that? I'll never stop. I can't lie in front of her. She can quote me. <laughs> but she can tell you for 15, 20 years, if I'm sitting in the recliner at home, I'm not playing games. If the TV's on, I've got the volume turned off so my dad can watch it and I've got it fixed, closed caption so he can read it, I'm in the Word. Amen. Oh, it don't take that. Yes, it does. If you want to have a move of God, if you want to have revival, you are going to have to show our Heavenly Father that He is the most precious thing in your life. Amen. Amen. Daryl Wayne worked with me. I never worked a day in that meat room that I did not have the word playing in my ears. Amen. Since 1992, I've not lived a day without it. So when I tell you that if you think you don't have time for it, you're lazy, I have lived what I'm preaching. Let's go Amen. On. Faith, the Bible says, uh, cometh by hearing and hearing. Faith never comes by having heard. Oh, I've heard that message before. You hear that? Oh, I don't need that. I knew that 20 years ago. Well, why ain't it manifested in your life? Absolutely. It's because you ain't hearing and hearing, hearing and hearing, hearing and hearing. They, they had a time where they, they could hear it, see it, feel it, talk to it, and be right there with him. And now God is out there asking them, where are you? Who told you you was naked? And what have you done? And then Adam did the blame game and said, that woman you gave me. Ain't that just like a man? It's 
She can clean the house, and, and you can't find anything because she cleaned it. It's her fault. God's asking those questions, and when when he tells her that about Eve, tells God that about Eve, he looks at Eve and says, what have you done? Did you? He asked her, did you eat of the fruit of the tree in the midst of the garden that I told you not to? And she says, that snake, that serpent, he beguiled me. Everybody always blaming somebody else. Yep. Our church would do better, better if they certain ones of them didn't smoke and chew that backer. <laughs> I've heard that. I can tell you, I was taught so hard and so strong against tobacco that I had a lady come to me at IGA. Desperate, seeking help. She said, my son's hurting. He's got a suicide spirit. All he's talked about for two days is he's going to kill himself. Uh, would you talk to him? Would you minister to him? And that's back when I thought I was a big, hot deal. I can handle anything. Yeah, my attitude back then was, yeah, just bring it to me. A lot of us start out that way, though. We feel the touch of God for the first time, and we think, why, well, you want to say, there ain't no drug like that. And once God touches you, I can take on and change the whole world. And her son comes into IGA, and he says, yes, I don't want to live. And I look, and I see a pack of Marlboros in his pocket, and what the church had taught me is he needs to quit smoking. He's wanting to tell me that he suffered abuse and that he has a devil and he needs help. But all I could see was them daggone cigarettes in his pocket. I didn't have, I had arrogance and pride. I thought it was a big ministry. I thought it was something. And I thought, he don't even know, well, how's God going to help him? He smokes. Come on, you ain't no different. Right. We call each other on the phone and act like it's compassion. We'll, we'll take Facebook Messenger and pretend. Well, I want you to pray for Brother So-and-so. We, we, we really need to pray for him. I seen him there yesterday. They ain't really praying. They're gossiping and camouflaging it as prayer. A person that really prays will know your deepest and darkest and most sinful acts and they will never utter a word to anybody except our Heavenly Father. That's exactly right. Thank you, Jesus. That's good. That's good. We like blaming everybody else. I when I, when I get to the judgment seat, y'all not going to be there with me. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's going to. I ain't going to be able to turn around and say, you all know, didn't give enough tithes and offerings and didn't support me right and didn't buy me CD burners and didn't hug my mommy. And <laughs> that's what we do in church. Excuses. Yeah. Yes. She said, the snake beguiled me and if you notice if you go back and read I ain't going to read it because I'm in a preaching mood but go back and read it God didn't question the snake when it came to dealing with the snake the question stopped and he started putting the curses you're going to be cursed you're always going to crawl on the ground and eat dust and he told Eve when you have children you're going to be many sorrows with it and he told the man you're going to have to work from the sweat of your brow now to make a living do you realize that what we honor most about life boy he's a hard working man he works and that's the curse it's the curse that we have. And I do believe in work. 
But I, I understand that that's not how God set it up originally. That came with a curse. Yes. Yes. We're supposed to just be able to go out in a cool spot by the lake and hang out with him. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> yeah. And God knew that they're going to mess everything else up. So I'm going to have to set them outside the garden. Put an angel out there with a sword so they can't get in it. There's other trees in there. If this bunch starts eating it, it's going to cause a mess. You have no idea how many things he's prevented you from going through and doing that you knew nothing about. You should have wrecked on the way to work, and he had you stop and gave you an urge for a donut, and you bought that donut, and he spared your life. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Did y'all see my pictures of that rock out here the other day? I was going to the Bank of Hyman down there. I had to go to two banks, and then I was going to go to Whitaker Bank there in Hazard. Just one little quick trip, and right as I pulled out of the Bank of Hyman, the urge come up in me, turn around, and go all the way to the Ison Branch. And it was so strong, I knew it was God. I turn around and start to the Ison Branch, and the whole mountain falls into the road. That's the protection of God. But how many times has he did that that I didn't even know about? That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. A lot. Yes. I did some dumb things. <laughs> Rednecks are stupid. We like guns. If my buddy will jump off of it, I'm jumping off something bigger. Come on, that's how we grew up. And, how, and you put a motor on it, we'll ride it. I don't care if it's a cooler or a dollhouse. Come on, I got heads nodding back there. I'm getting some stuff like that. Yeah. I've been in places I didn't mean to be and shouldn't have been, but I, I was going fishing. I mean, around Wesley County at Redbird. And I'm crossing a lot of people's gardens to get to the river. And I'm walking through this nice. But my dad always farm. I'm no good gardening and bad. I can look at it and tell if it's cared for. And these tomato plants are awesomely irrigated. Each plant's got its own little water system. And it catches my attention. I've got rod and reels. I'm looking. There's a row of tomatoes. A row of tomatoes. Uh oh. That's marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> I go back. Tomato. Tomatoes. And literally, that pipe's running through there. And every plant plant has its own little water system. Oh, that's marijuana, and then that's marijuana, and then that's marijuana. I turn, and as I'm leaving, I hear a gunshot, and it's so close to my ear, I feel the wind on the bullet. Oh, yeah. I don't think that was that bad a shot that day. I think God just kind of... All of us rednecks has done stupid things. <laughs> when Tannerite come out, we put it in a microwave. Shot the microwave. Caught the whole mountain on fire. <laughs> oh, yeah, it wasn't no little... I mean, literally, it, it caught... Like, it burnt the whole hillside. <laughs> yeah. God spared us. <laughs> Luckily, we had some fires around my house and had sense enough to know to go cut a clear path around it so it don't go no further, but it, it burnt that mountain. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> well, God banishes them to protect them. 
ask them a lot of questions that are confusing. And then, it says, Adam knew Eve, she bare a son, and she said, This day God has given me a man. Cain was born, and then it says, And Abel was born. Now, I do not know if they was twins. So it sounds like it. But sometimes the Bible will say, And, and they 700 years in between when something happened. But she had two boys. It says that Cain was a tiller of the ground. Abel was a keeper of the sheep. Everything in Genesis was good again. Adam and Eve were back doing what God created them to do. Replenish the earth. They had two sons. Their sons had grown up into these successful people. That's what every parent wants for kids. You go by Cain's and he's got this beautiful garden. Anything you need that grows, he's taking care of it. And then you go to Abel and he's tending sheep. Everything's good. But then, now, some, in some way, the little boys hit on the ideal that they are going to make an offering to God. And one of the shocking things I will tell you is a lot of times you can do the right thing at the wrong time, in the wrong place, and it has no spiritual value. Just because you're doing a right, good thing doesn't mean it's right. Just because you're writing a big check. I don't mean it's right. Yeah. Are you writing it to impress me? Right. Mm -hmm. Or are you writing it to help me? I've had both. I've had some big checks was wrote hoping I'd get on Facebook and tell that they were big checks. And I've had some little old ladies that give me $5 because they absolutely believed in everything I was doing and wanted to help me do it along the way. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. That's what matters. Amen. See, there, there is such a thing as an earthly offering it's, it's something, it's praise, it's giving, it's a sacrifice, it's time that you make that you decided to do on your own and you made up that this would be a good thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of that goes on. That's why we see a lot of ministries raise up and go under. And impress men. That's the yeah. truth, God. It is. Them boys had hit on the decision that they're going to give some offerings to God. And Cain gathers up the fruits of his labor. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of people preach, heard a lot of things preached about that was an earthly gift. But then Abel comes along and also gives an offering of the fruits of his labor. And the, according to tradition, the first son is supposed to be the big deal, highfalutin, shindig winning person, firstborn. God never sees it that way. If you go look, the second born most of the time is who God came to and blessed. Why? When God looked at Cain's offering, he rejected it. And when he looked at Abel's offering, he treated it with respect, the Bible says. Hebrews says, by faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. 
Why was one accepted and one rejected? The two reasons I started off when the first verses I read, you overcome the devil through the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Hebrews tells us that Abel by faith, he used his faith when he gave his gift. If you are giving and not using your faith, Faith, and God has no respect for that offering. Yes. Don't give to show out. Amen. Give to help Amen. and give absolutely dog determined, believing God for some kind of breakthrough. Yes. Praise the Lord. The second part of why his offering was accepted. It was bloody. Mm -hmm. See, when God was asking Adam and Eve questions uh, and they answered him blaming everybody else, uh, the first thing he did, I don't know what it was, uh, what kind it was, uh, but God himself uh, went out into the wilderness uh, and grabbed an animal by the nap of the neck uh, and murdered it dead uh, and skinned it uh, and brought, without the shedding of blood, uh, there is no remission of sin. sin. There has to be blood shed for us to be covered. Yes. God killed the first animal. And see, when, when he was approaching Cain, he asked him questions. Why is your countenance down? And he said, why, why? And kept bread naked. He said, why are you frowning? He said, what have you done? I can't buy that lie. I ain't done nothing to rib naked. God asked him, where is your brother? Did, not, did God not know where Adam and Eve was that day? Did he not know that they had talked to the snake? Did he not know that they had ate of the fruit they wasn't supposed to? And now in this generation, did God actually not know what Cain had done? Did he not? He's an all-knowing God. Did he not know where his brother was? He and he he kind of the boy and I've been this way. Where is your brother? And he answered him, "Am I my brother's keeper?" I got a smart man. He thought he had everybody fooled. He thought he had the wool over everybody's eyes. Yeah. And then God said this to him. Astound. The voice. Everybody say voice. 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 Remember when they walked with God in the garden in the cool of the day, they heard the voice of God walking. You overcome the devil through blood and through the word or the voice of your testimony. And now he's telling his brother, the voice of your brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Oh, if they had movies that did things right, but they weaken them, and every preacher and every Western, Western is the goofy hat wearing silly fellow can't shoot. If they ever made Christian movies right, it'd be better than any of these comic book stuff. That's right. And I like the comic book stuff. But you think about it, you've got a planet created, you've got men that are so much in dominion over it that they control and name the animals, and they have children, and now there's murder, that be, that would be an interesting movie. And now once the murder happens, that dead boy's blood is crying from the ground. 
tell you it's a bloody gospel. Yes. Yes. Why is God asking these questions? If he already knows. If he knows where Adam and Eve is, why is he saying where are you? If he knows what Adam and Eve has done, why does he say, what have you done? If he knows who told them they was naked, why does he ask them, who told you you was naked? Why does he ask Eve or Adam, who caused you to eat this fruit when he blames Eve? Why does he ask her, what have you done, if he knows? Why now that there's a dead brother is he asking, where is your brother and what have you done if he knows? Why? See, God's greatest desire on earth, and we can never figure it out, we think always in the church that he's mad at us, that he's frustrated with us, that he's aggravated with us, that he don't like us, that he don't care for us, that we're not good enough. There are so many of you out there in radio land, you're trying to quit this, get off this, quit seeing her, quit talking to him, quit going there, and then I'll go to church. See, those people are thinking when God asks a question, He really don't know. Come on, dude. There's people that would be here today, but they're afraid of... I need to quit this before I go. And back to my story. That little boy come to me. Uh, teenager and I'm going to kill myself me and another Pentecostal hole in his powerhouse that thought we his hot stuff was standing there I'm going to do it I don't want to live and he said my mama said you can help me can you my answer was you need to get the Marlboros out of your pocket and get rid of the cigarettes It's forever marking me. You holiness folks wonder why I don't preach that crap anymore and why I don't talk that junk. You keep listening to what I'm about to tell you. You taught me that they couldn't get to God unless they quit. And I answered him that way. I talked to him about that. You got to get rid of them old cancer sticks. You got to quit that stuff before you get right with God. I never listened to one thing about what was hurting him. Oh, Jesus. Next morning, I got a little mom. Comes to me from the door and says, He did it. You want to know why I don't preach that junk anymore? His mama came and told me. He did it. He got in his car last night in the garage and closed the garage door and the windows and turned the car on and died. All I gave him was cigarettes. For a long time, could I even go to heaven? I didn't give him Jesus. I didn't give him hope. I gave him religious tradition. I want you people that are so hard against that stuff to know. How many Pepsis do you drink today? How many Little Debbie cakes did you eat today? How long did you sit on the porch and drink coffee and absolutely do nothing? There is no difference than a Coca-Cola addiction and a Pepsi addiction and a Little, little Debbie addiction than there is a cigarette addiction. They are none different. That's the truth. Amen. That's right. 
I went to a barber shop with men one day that we, we needed a haircut because our hair had to be short in church and, and the girl stopped and took a smoke break that was cutting her hair and that shut down the whole of this man. Hey, you better give me somebody else cut my hair. You've been handling them old cancer sticks. You ain't cutting my hair. But what a life that is. We literally, we're, we're in Indiana and we will not let this little lady cut our hair I had an old car that was held together by faith and miracles. And you looked at it, you would know. I got invited to a gathering. I drove four hours. My air conditioner didn't work. My windows wouldn't hardly roll down. I wore a short sleeve t-shirt because it's hot. I get to the parking lot of my church brothers and one of them comes out to the car and goes, Brother, we a bunch of us preachers meeting. He said, you need to go to my house and get you a long sleeve shirt. Come on. <laughs> you ain't going to come in there and eat in a short sleeve shirt. I preached it because I thought it was true. But the day I failed that suicidal boy, I made my mind up. Right. Tradition will no longer have an effect on me. That's right. I wasn't allowed to go in Ponderosa and eat with the preachers because I didn't have a long sleeve shirt and I drove four hours to get there. I've been through some stuff. You want to know why I got power? I've been through some stuff. And the most holiness people I knew was Clyde and Ruth Kilburn. And they was the opposite of that. Yeah, Ruth never cut her hair, didn't have a TV, slept in a dress. But she loved everybody. Amen. You worked for Clyde. Clyde, when Walmart changed the dress code policy, went to them short sleeve polo shirts, uh, he wouldn't do it. He believed in long sleeves. Uh, but he wasn't mean and offensive. Uh, Clyde always would tell me when I started getting into that crap. And, and the only reason I preached that stuff is I wanted to impress the preachers uh, so they'd have me over to preach. But Clyde's advice to me was, son, if you offend them, you'll never win them. That's the truth, too. I hear that boy suddenly is saying that today. It's okay for any of you to live as strict as you want to on anything you want to live. It's honorable if you decide to do it. But the moment you look at me and tell me I have to do it because you are, it's a tradition. Yes, yes. There's things I can do every day that might be appalling to you. Yes. And there's things you can do that I wouldn't think about doing. But let me give you a great key. I am not responsible for you. Right. Me. I'm responsible for me. One brother offered up a sacrifice. It's sacrificial stuff. One brother offers up a sacrifice and it's rejected. Why? He didn't do it in faith and there wasn't no blood involved. You overcome Satan by the word of your testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Now God's asking questions and telling him, your brother's blood crieth up unto me. There's some things that goes on in faith that we've never preached. Faith is a lot bigger. We think we know all about it, and we ain't even start. I, I hope here I get to preach some of the things God showed me about faith. The voice of his blood. Within every creature is blood, and in that blood is the life of the creature. There are no life. There 
is no life without words. Blood talks. And the language. That day, what blood was saying was uh, all I did was make an offering of faith to God and my brother talked to me and led me out in the field and killed me. My brother's a murderer. He's guilty. He's guilty as charged. He needs judged. He needs punished. He needs dealt with. That's what God was hearing. Got it coming. He did it. He reaped it. He sowed it. Don't that sound like a lot of the church today? You do it. You reap it. You're going to sow it. Folks, it's a lot harder to backslide than people make it out to be. The church don't like hearing that. Preachers don't like saying that. It's hard. What have I, Brother Todd? No, it's easy. You can go out and sin. And... So! We all sin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And come short of the glory of God. And preachers have got afraid to talk about that and want to act like, but it's been a lot of years since I sinned. You just did. With your mouth, you lied. Yeah, yeah. amen, amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, he said, any of us that says we have no sin is a liar. That's exactly what it says. See, we, what we can't figure out is God is not that tore up and aggravated about sin. He has the answer to it. Why did he ask them so many questions? knows everything. Mm -hmm. He knows where his brother is. He's telling him now that he hears the voice of his blood crying from the ground. Why? Why does an all-knowing God ask so many questions? Because he desires to help. And he cannot help you until he hears your word. He knew he had killed him. He knew he needed to help. He needed to hear them confess. It's no different today. He needs to hear your words. Once he hears your words, he will kill every animal on earth and anything in your path to protect and cover and hide your nakedness. Yes, yes. He asks questions so he can help. He, already, he did not find out about your sin when you tell him about it. That's what we think. We, we so, we're, we're so sin conscious that we think, hey, Lord, I got mad and drove lawn Warren Creek today. My mom laughed at that because if you pray for me and want, if you try to figure out and want to know what my sins are, anger, with stuff not working right. Hmm. And I've got the greatest witness in my life. <laughs> yeah, I need strength in that. How many times the last few weeks have I pulled you and Daddy together and said, as my father and mother, you have authority over me. You need to pray for me about my anger. Did that two or three times. Made them lay hands. I'll tell it. I want a church that'll tell it. 
Amen. We're never going to help people if we hide everything and act like we don't do nothing. No. I don't like how my yard looks right now. It looks like Fred Sanford. It's messed up. It's junked up. It had grass too big in it. I got a new lawnmower. I'm going to cut the grass, clean the yard up, and fix some things, and the lawnmower won't start. I tried 10 or 15 times. I go in the house. Sit on it. I'm not one of these fellas. I don't like turning their inches. No, I don't. Never have. I go back out, it won't start. I walk away from it, I come back, I unplug the thing on the spark plug, put it back on, I push the primer, I try to start it, it won't start. Pick it up and do a devilish helicopter shout <laughs> and land it in the creek. And dare anybody go get it. <laughs> Maybe let somebody let some stranger pick it up. Is that right, Brother Todd? No, it's wrong. But God didn't find out I had an anger issue. He didn't step up that day and go, hey, y'all come and watch. Todd's throwing a lawnmower in the creek. <laughs> oh, yeah. Black Top won't play a Copeland Hagen. I'm trying to watch Charles Katz, who it was. Wanting to hear the word. Buffered. Buffered. Mm -hmm. I started at Buffers. I started at Buffers. I ran back and slapped the <laughs> snot out of that laptop. They don't work too good after you smack them. <laughs> <laughs> Mom comes in there and she says, what's, what's the matter? You think ain't working? I said, it's tore up. And she said, you reckon anybody can fix it? I said, nah, ain't a whole lot you can do for one of them after you slap the snot out of them. <laughs> Mom and Dad, I need you to pray for my <laughs> But You know what? God didn't quit me. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I was dumb and wasteful. Threw a lawnmower in the creek. Busted up a laptop that I used for ministry. But God didn't say, well, Todd's acting like a fool. I'm not going to be around him anymore. He's with us every day. He promised us that I will never leave you or forsake you. I will be with you to the end of the age. Yes. That means when I'm walking the floor with a notebook and Bible in hand, praying and crying out to God, He's with me. Yes. But when I rear back and throw my lawnmower in the creek, He did not leave me. He didn't forsake me. He yes. stood right there with me. There's another verse that says this. The blood of Jesus. We don't talk about the blood enough anymore. That's right. We, we don't we don't used to you go to church at every service you heard there's power, power, wonder working power in the blood. That's right. Oh, of the Lamb. Yes. Used to if you brought a sick kid in church, two or three old church, old saints of God would get up. I'm pleading the blood over this child. Devil, you can't have him. I'm pleading the blood over him. Every service, you heard songs about the blood, messages about the blood, and old saints, that any problem that come up, they attacked it with the blood. Yes. Yes. That's the truth. See, you already, you already get that bad. Mm -hmm. When my dad's sick, I realized that it, it, it started in Gethsemane when Jesus prayed and blood came out of his body. When they 
put them crowns in his head. They fastened that crown to his head with them spikes. There was blood that hit the ground that day. When they hit him and they spit on him and they kicked him through the street, there was blood dropping and dripping everywhere. And we today are so comfortable that we don't realize how much he suffered and what he went through so I could have victory. He let mere men spit on him. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about you all, but when I was a kid, I'd get, I like to eat candy bars and stuff and pop in the back seat. We'd go to Dry Fork Market, and that's what I was focused on was comic books, candy bar, and pop. I get that chocolate on my face, she would get on her hand and get that chocolate off my face. I want you to know, as a little boy, that, that sometimes that was horrible. <laughs> well, mama don't care. She, she ain't going to the next door where her baby looking like he don't bath. <laughs> Clean him up with. The son of the living God. The king of kings. Chosen. Born as a man, knowing that men are going to spit in his face. He did that for me. That's why when I throw the water on the creek, four seconds later, I can still pray. Yep. I can still stay. Mm -hmm. I realize that when I hit him in the face, and talk about each other's failures. Uh, friends, uh, take blows uh, and take hits uh, and, and take defeat uh, for those that they love. They put that cross on his back and made him carry it to, to where he would stumble and fall down. And why did he do that? They took him to a whipping post, made fun of him, called him king. Had him naked in the city. They took a thing called the cat of nine tails, nine things with bone and glass tied in the bottom of it. And they leaned him over that whipping post and they hit him. Blood fell all over the ground that day. And Peter declared about it. That he did that. So I can stand up and say. With his stripes. I am healed. He knew I would face sickness. He knew that day. That in 19 or 2012 that Todd Ambergy would be in a coma at the UK hospital. Now it hurts every time they it hurts but Todd is going to need this. It's a bloody mess. don't believe and you are not in faith the word of your testimony and the blood makes you whole yes. with his stripes you are healed
It was so obvious that he didn't deserve it when Pilate, the ruler, was asked to kill him. He said, I, I'm not going to kill him. Pilate come out and offered him and Barabbas thinking they ain't nobody going to say Barabbas and this will get me out of it. But the sinful world chose the most sinful man, free Barabbas. And then Pilate actually washed his hands and said, I am not guilty of this man's blood. But you are. I am. We're guilty of it. But we can take that blood. And if you have faith in the blood, yes. you can do anything. Because ain't no arrogance in that. I know how stupid I am. I know how lazy and what a failure I am, but I also different times that I had financial needs and couldn't pay on it. My mom and dad went and paid my debts. I can sit around thinking, well, I wonder if she really paid that. Come on. She told me, I'm going down there and I'm paying that off. And I didn't think, hmm, I wonder if my mom really or my dad really did pay that. That's how we do, Jesus. Yeah, yes. Sin is no big deal to God if you stay close to Him and walk with Him and confess your sins to Him and repent. Yes. That's all you got to do. Repent and tell Him about it and then talk your victory. Everything I do, he's paid for it. Yes. Everything I'm going to do, yes. he's paid for it. And that's what people are they, they okay with the, he's forgiven you of your past, but they have a hard time. Well, brother, you can't keep doing that and what and serve God. Where do you find that in the Word? Everybody he used was messed up individuals that would mess up and get a little better. Mess up and get a little better. I'm not giving you an open license to sin because I know you already are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you giving them a license? No, they already are. I already am. But I know that every drop of that blood, every suffering and pain, he was wounded yes. for my transgressions. Yes. yes. Bruised for my iniquities. Yes. The chastisement of my peace was laid on him yeah. with his stripes. I'm in the field. See, God needs you to be open and honest about it. Yeah. Amen. That's it. Tell him. Confess it. And you, you're not going to slip around the corner and do it and him not know about it. He knows. Tell him. If you are faithful and just to confess your sins, he said he is faithful and just to cleanse you and forgive you of all unrighteousness. That's why he asked those questions in the garden. He needed to hear their words so he could help. He don't want you to confess it because he's mad at you and because he's out to get you. He wants you to confess so he can help. Yes. Praise the Lord. He 
it says the blood of Jesus speaks out better things than that. They, they beat him, put him on a cross. He died. Three days later, he arose again. And then he ascends into heaven and it says he carried his blood. Yes. Yes, he did. Yes. To the mercy seat. To the mercy seat. Praise the Lord. And he poured his blood on yeah. him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and the, the Father's throne seat is there. The very same God that heard Abel's blood crying out, my brother's guilty, he's a murderer, he needs judged, he needs found wanting, and he needs punished. The God that could hear that is now right at that blood. Yeah. It speaks better things. Hearing it, it's it's saying. It's not saying what Abel's blood says. It's not saying about what preachers tell you. Preachers tell you you can quit that, you're going to hell. That's not true. That's a lie. That's a lie, sir. That decreases the power of the blood. God's not hearing anymore that I deserve to be dead. I deserve to be judged. I deserve to be punished. No. What he's hearing is I let him beat me. I let him stick that crown in my head. I let them kick me through the streets. I let them spit on me. I let them nail me to a cross so Todd can be clean. It's saying, I am clean. Yes. 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 That's what he hears about me is that the price has been paid. The debt and the punishment. Yes. I took the punishment. Yes. Yes. The glory. See, that cross in today's society would be an electric chair. That was an execution element. Yeah. Just like an electric He let them execute. So I can pastor. As flawed and messed up as I am. As many decisions as I've made wrong, as many times as I've got mad and tore stuff up and not did things right, uh, I can pastor New Beginnings Church uh, with the anointing and the glory and the power of God because I know He suffered and He bled and He died so I could do this. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> That's why there ain't no stopping me. I am fully convinced that if I do wrong today, He's not going to leave me. He's not going to forsake me. He's going to be with me to the end of the age. If I mess up tomorrow, He's not going to leave me. He's not going to forsake me. He'll be with me to the end of the age. As long as I don't give up and don't cave in, the only way you can be defeated is quit. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Confess. He needs to hear your own confession. The Bible's short anymore on anger. Used to, I'd go pray 30 minutes about it. Then he told me one day to get them to pray for me. I tear something up now. I said, Lord, I was stupid. I know. I'll go get mom and dad. <laughs> Parents have spiritual authority over yes. their kids. I'm old and I'm our only child. They ain't got nobody else to pray about. <laughs> there is hope for you yes. if you do not quit. Yes. He bled and he suffered and he died yes. 
Everybody's telling you that you ain't no good because you can't quit suboxing, because you can't stop those drugs. Listen, sir, some of those preachers are so fat that they can't quote two verses without getting out of breath and they're making you feel bad. Their fried chicken is no different than your drugs. Your drugs is just killing you faster. Both need the blood and mercy of Jesus for men to overcome them. Thank you, Lord. We overcome the devil by the blood and our mouth, our confession, our confession of sin, our confession of faith. I got the blood applied to me. If I say I'm healed, healed. with the blood applied to me, I'm healed. No matter what it feels like, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it sounds like, he said it. Not up to me. He's not a man that he should lie. Why does God ask questions? He needs your words. Amen. Father, I pray for this church and everybody out there in social media and on CDs. Open their eyes to that you're not mad at them. You want to help them. You're not mad at their sin, but you want to correct and help their sin. Let them know that you hear the voice of their testimony. And with the blood of Jesus on a man's mouth uh, and a man confessing his sins uh, and speaking the word, they are unstoppable. Thank you. Lord, I pray for this city. Yes, Father. And I am to the yeah, I'll do that. We pray for Pastor Max Sloan's yes. church. Thank you, Father. Thank There's you, room for her. Yes. Both of them. Yes, thank you, Father. We pray for the Hyman Church of God. Yes, thank you, Lord. I have good fellowship with both of them. We are not in competition. Jesus. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. Father, let Max's vision grow. He's always had a heart for this area. Yes. He's always you. had a passion for this community. Thank you, Father. Send the right people to him. Send the right help to yes, him. Father. Let him be the voice of faith that he's always wanted to be. Thank you, Father. And for the Hyman Church of God, let them be the revival yes. center that they've always saw themselves being. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, let my church be healthy. Yes, Father. <laughs> Yes, Father. <laughs> if we're healthy, we'll grow. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Brother James, if you're listening. Thank you, Jesus. I say and believe and pray with you. Faith ain't strong enough for total healing. You're beat up, personal stuff, fear, but... You can believe that that's just rock dust. I agree with you that it is not cancer. Cancer is not going to kill you. But it's only rock dust. In Jesus' name. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Now I guess it's time to take me up offer. Yeah. <laughs>